Scott Bode here with resident expert Jamie Bell to talk to you today about how to properly set up your ring and pinion for your 1986 to 2014 Ford Mustang with an 8.8. All right, so before we dive into the actual procedure of how to change your ring and pinion, tell us some of the things that you're checking, you're looking for, what are the things you're gonna measure to make sure that you get a nice, quiet rear end? Well, the first thing you're, you need to know is what the, what the terms are for the adjustments and the measurements you're making. Uh, pinion preload is how tight the pinion bearings are and how freely or loose the uh, pinion flange will rotate. The next thing is gonna be pinion depth. The pinion depth measurement is how the pinion relates to the center line of the axle housing through the bearings. And backlash is simply the clearance between the ring gear and the pinion. To set up the proper ring and pinion gear, you're gonna want some specialty tools, right? It's gonna require some specialty tools to be able to get your uh, pinion depth correct. Ford has their own specific set, that's what we use here in the shop. But you can get a universal uh, pinion depth gauge set for that. You're also gonna need a dial indicator to be able to check your backlash. And having a good accurate micrometer is also helpful to be able to check what all your shims thicknesses are. So one of the first steps in setting up this rear end is going to be setting that pinion depth, correct? The pinion depth is the first thing you're gonna set after you've put in new bearings, unless you're gonna reuse your old bearings, but most time, if you were replacing the ring and pinion, put new bearings in. It's one of those things, right? While you're in there, while you might as well address it. While you're in there, it's cheap to do it now versus later, but go ahead and get your pinion bearing cups uh, driven into the housing, and then set up your uh, pinion depth gauge set and check your pinion depth. What you're looking for is between the gauge block that sets into the pinion bearings or the distance between that and the tube that goes where the carrier sits and the carrier bearings. And you're looking for how thick of a shim you need and it's just as simple as sliding the, uh, the pinion shims that come with the, kit, right in with the installation the kit. You just slide it in there until it has a, a not a forced feel, but it's just going to have some resistance to pulling the shims in and out. Most of the time with an 8.8, they're going to come out somewhere between 27 thousandths to 32 thousandths. And that's going to be the shim you're going to use when you go ahead and install that front pinion. That, that, that shim goes between the pinion and the pinion bearing when it's pressed on. Okay. So now you've figured out your pinion depth. You said it's supposed to be between 27 thousandths and 32 thousandths. So now let's go ahead and install the bearings, right? On that front pinion. The bearing presses on, uh, pressing the bearings on the, the pinion and the carrier, it's always better to press them than it is to try to drive them on. You don't want a big hammer on that? You don't want a big hammer on them, possibly chip your bearings. Uh, it's just way more consistent to press them. Okay, so you're gonna go ahead and get those pressed on. Then you're gonna uh, put the pinion into the pin, into the rear end housing, but don't forget to put the crush sleeve on before you do it. Now that's that piece that looks like it's kind of got like a rib around it, right? Yep. Okay. That is a collapsible spacer, and at a specific torque, it starts to distort, and it sets your pinion uh, preload, pinion bearing preload. Gotcha. Now is that something when you when you're setting it? Are you doing it off a of feel? Are you doing it off of experience? You, you, you can do it off of feel if you've done it enough times, but it has a actual torque value, which is 16 to 30 inch pounds of torque rotation on the pinion flange when you have the bearings properly set in place. So the rotation of the flange, not the actual, we're not only bolting this on with 16 no. inch pounds because you're over there hammering on it, right? With your yep. impact to really kind of drive it in, but that, that's the whole purpose of that crush sleeve, right? Is to set the set the clearance on those bearings or the preload on the bearings because they're tapered bearing, tapered roller bearings. They have to have a certain amount of resistance okay. to have them properly set. Now let's say you're a first timer and you're just driving and driving on that impact. Can you get it too tight? Yes. If you over collapse that sleeve and get it too tight and try to run it that way, you're just gonna burn the pinion bearings up. So that was something where you would then need to remove that front pinion nut and to start that process over again 
with a new collapsible. Take the pinion back out, put a new sleeve in it, and start over. Gotcha, I mean, that's gonna save you a lot of time in the long run because this isn't that easy of a task, and the last thing you wanna do is chew up your rear end, you know, because you had it too tight. So now, you're going to bolt the new ring gear right to the actual differential. In this particular case, we were using a used ring gear and pinion set, but we had new bolts with the, uh, the Ford Performance install kit that we were using. If you find yourself having to reuse your, your original bolts, clean the threads, get the ring gear seated in place, and then one at a time, uh, take them back out, red Loctite, and then torque them to 95 to 100 foot-pounds. Okay. With the, uh, for, with the new bolts that already have Loctite on them, just go ahead and uh, get them all seated and then torque them to 95 to 100 foot-pounds of torque. Now, speaking of a uh, new ring gear versus used ring gear, is there a disadvantage if you use a used ring gear? As long as the used ring gear and pinion set are matched, okay. they're not one from one set, one from another, and they have a proper uh, wear pattern, there's no problem with reusing them. Okay. So now we're going to try to set the backlash, right? Yep. That backlash is, what? it's the distance between the ring gear and the pinion gear, right? The yep. distance between the teeth. How do you accomplish that? Uh, you do it with uh, bearing spacers. Okay. They go between the, uh, the axle tubes. All right. Under the caps and the bearings themselves and you can use those to adjust the carrier back and forth to get your backlash. So technically you're taking that, the ring gear, right, that's attached to the carrier or the differential, and you're shearing it left to right to get either more or less engagement out of the ring and pinion. Yep, that is correct. And what, what kind of backlash are we looking for here? Uh, ideally we wanna be between eight and 12 thousandths. Okay, now I noticed it wasn't even final assembly, but you were putting grease and things like that on your shims. Why were you doing that? It helps to keep the shims from falling out when you're trying to get the differential in place because let's face it, nobody has enough hands to hold all that stuff at one time. And it also helps just to help everything kind of slide into place a little bit easier. If you have your original shims when you're doing a, a ring and pinion, it's always best to start with them. On this particular housing, we did not have its original shims. Gotcha. So I just had to start with what I had and start shimming from there. I wanted to make sure that A, I could just get backlash in it and that the uh, carrier was not too tight sliding in and out of the housing. Now, we see you doing a bunch of math in the video. What are you trying to figure out there? Once you figure out what your backlash is, you have to start making changes. And it's not a one-to-one -one rate on how much backlash you have versus how much shim it's gonna to take to make that move. It's a little bit over that. It's, it's basically a one and a quarter to one. So you're saying we're trying to find anywhere between eight to 12 thousandths, right, with the backlash. Mm -hmm. Let's say you put it in there, we're at 20. What do you do? You're gonna to have to move the carrier in Closer to the pinion. Closer to the pinion, so you're gonna take out 12 thousandths out of one side and add that back to the other. If you have the Ford Performance install kit, then you've got a, a set of washers and select fit shims that you can use to set your backlash. And once you've got your backlash between eight and 12 thousandths, then you need to check your uh, carrier bearing preload. Typically what you do is take whatever shims that you have, if they, if they slide in and out of the case, fairly easy, you have to tap them in with a hammer, you're gonna to wanna to add six thousandths per side to set your carrier bearing preload. If you don't set your carrier bearing preload properly, if it's too loose, the bearings are gonna loosen up, you're gonna lose your backlash. If they're too tight, you're gonna burn up your carrier bearings. So it's pretty important to get them correct. So this is after you've set your backlash. Yes. After you've got it dialed in eight to 12,000, you're then gonna to wanna to put an additional six thousandths worth of shims on each side. Yes. So you've done all your calculations, you check the backlash. What's one of the old school tricks just to try to make sure everything is cohesive? You can use marking compound to make sure that everything is where it's supposed to be. 
And the marking compound will tell you if the backlash is too tight, too loose, or if your pinion depth is off. It just depends on what the contact pattern looks like in that compound when you roll the ring and pinion together. So even when you check everything with a dial indicator and you're using your calibers on the shims, do you always check it with marking compound, Jamie? Yes, it's always a good idea to go back and check it just to make sure. Because just because the uh, pinion depth tool said this is what you need, there can be some minor variations in the bearings themselves and that's mostly what you're, what you're adjusting for is how that case is machined and how those bearings are made and there can be some slight variation there and your pinion depth will be off just a little bit and marking compound will tell you how far off it is. It's funny, I've never set up a rear end mostly because of how technical it is, but it reminds me of like setting push rod length. Sometimes what you see and you measure isn't accurate. So at the end of the day, you get your marking compound, roll the valve train around, or in this case, roll the ring and pinion, and let's see exactly where these things are meshing, if that backlash is correct, if the pinion depth is correct, because it's just a little bit of peace of mind at the end of the day. You don't have to dive back into that rear end. If you use marking compound and you see where the contact points are and you know that they're correct, you know you're gonna have a quiet gear set. So, what is it gonna look like, your marking compound on that ring gear, when it is set properly? On the uh, drive side of the ring gear should be centered. The coast is either gonna be centered or slightly to the toe of the ring gear which is towards the, the differential itself, okay. towards the inside. And that's your most common correct patterns. Now if it's top and bottom wearing and not in the center, like we were talking about? That's your pinion depth is off. Okay. If you've got a pattern that's uh, top and bottom on the drive and the coast side, that's a pinion depth issue. If it's at the bottom of both sides, then you've got a, uh, backlash problem, it's too tight. If it's at the top of the ring gear, then they're too loose. So now, that completes the process for the 86 to 2014. Now we know the S550, it's, it's an IRS Mustang, but it has a Super 8.8. .8. What's the difference between the solid axle 8.8 .8 and the Super 8.8? .8? The bearings are bigger in the Super 8.8. .8. The ring and pinion is a little bit different. It, it's different because it uses different bearings, different crush sleeve, but the process for setting up the backlash, pinion depth, preload is the same. It uses a different tool, okay. but it's the same process. You have to go through the same steps to do it. So same backlash, same preload, just a little bit different of an installation process, correct? A little different install process, but it's, it's the same basic setup. You do it the same way. Wow. How are you still talking to me about all those gear changes we made the last couple years in the drag car? I don't know. If you like what you saw or you want us to get more in depth about other technical articles or installs, tell us. Leave a note in the comments below. Hit like, subscribe, follow us on Facebook, TikTok, YouTube, Instagram, and don't forget, Steeda or Speed matters. <laughs>